lot of questions about getting married in the Catholic Church. Can someone please help me? Hey folks, in our first marriage video, we explained the meaning behind the sacrament and why it's important to celebrate a Catholic wedding. Here, I'll give you answers to a few more specific questions that might come up as you're preparing to celebrate the sacrament of matrimony. I would like to have a destination wedding. Will the church allow that? As long as that destination is a church, sure. But if you're thinking about standing on a beach during sunset, mm, most likely no. Everybody hopes that their wedding is beautiful, meaningful, and unforgettable, and the church wants that for you as well. But it's important to understand that a Catholic wedding is a sacrament. And like all the other sacraments, baptism, Eucharist, ordination, etc., it allows us to experience God's presence in our lives in a visible way. During the sacrament of matrimony, you will invite God into your marriage and be a public witness to the world of God's covenant of love. So while God is, of course, present at every locale and destination, what better way to show the world that God is an important part of your marriage than having the ceremony in His house? How about this? Find that church near your perfect beach and then get to the reception in time for the sunset. Now, in some cases, such as a Catholic married and non-baptized person, permission might be granted to hold the ceremony outside of a church, but you'll need to talk to your local priest about that. What if I'm Catholic, but my future spouse is not? Can we still get married in the church? Yes, you can. Only one of you needs to be Catholic in order to get married in the church. A great many Catholic weddings celebrate the union between a Catholic and another Christian, or a Catholic and a person of another faith tradition. All you need is permission to do so. How do I get that permission, you ask? Here's a good time to review the importance of beginning marriage preparation as soon as possible. Drop by your local Catholic parish and speak to a priest like me. I'll ask you some questions, we'll fill out some forms, I'll take care of the whole thing for you. Now some of the questions I may ask are, in which faith community will you involve yourselves? In what tradition will you raise your children? How will you respond to extended family members of different faiths? And in what ways can you create unity in light of your religious differences? It's important that from the very beginning, the two of you are open and honest about your faith and spiritual beliefs. They will have a significant impact on your marriage. Weddings are expensive enough. How come this sacrament costs so much money? The sacraments are God's free gift to us and therefore never cost us anything. However, in order to celebrate the sacrament of matrimony, we'll need lights on in the church, air conditioning if it's hot, heating if it's cold, a wedding coordinator to handle everything, a room for the bride to get prettied up, another room for the groom to stay sequestered, musicians to play, a canter to sing, maintenance to clean up, security to make sure everyone is safe, and it all costs money. Your contribution to the church allows the staff to do their best to make this sacramental celebration a good experience for everyone who comes to witness your wedding. And since you're likely to spend a small fortune on other features of your wedding day, is this really so much to ask? Some churches will even offer a discount for their parishioners. So if you're not a member already, go ahead and join the parish. And if you're genuinely unable to pay the fee, talk with the priest. Most churches will not turn you away for financial reasons. Why can't we play our favorite songs during the ceremony? Why does the music have to be so churchy? The policies on music will differ from church to church, but they all strive to create a celebration that remembers Christ's love for us and helps us to pray for your marriage. Music for the celebration of marriage not only adds beauty and dignity to the ceremony, but it has a more important liturgical function. Music should reflect and communicate, above all, the mystery of God's love in Jesus, especially as it pertains to the couple joined together in marriage. While popular love songs are nice, they usually don't meet the criteria that the church has for music at Mass. However, they would be great to play at the reception. What if we're already living together? Can we still get married in the church? The answer is yes. Living together is not a deal breaker, but let's be real. 
The issue is not sharing a mailing address, it's about sex. Remember that marriage is a covenant and sex is reserved for those who have entered into that permanent, faithful, and fruitful covenant relationship sealed by God. What I always say to couples living together is, give yourself some time and space to truly prepare for that lifelong commitment you're about to make. Find a temporary roommate, move in with mom and dad, sleep in another room. At least agree to abstain from sex during your engagement wherever you're living. One of us is divorced. Can we still be married in the church? In most cases, yes, but you'll probably need an annulment. In fact, most churches won't even schedule your wedding until an annulment has been granted. So go talk to a priest as soon as possible and he'll help you get the process started. Once granted, an annulment gives you the freedom to marry in the Catholic Church. Wait, I still have so many other questions. If you have any additional questions regarding common items such as unity candles, cultural traditions, having small children in the ceremony, the use of pets, or options for readings and prayers. These answers will vary from church to church, so discuss them with your local priest. In the meantime, try not to get stressed or too overwhelmed while planning your wedding. The church is here to help you. Congratulations on your upcoming wedding. May it be a blessed celebration.